nine o'clock, Sunday morning. Is there anywhere else you'd rather be than on the plot? I don't think so. There's a few more jobs to do today, and the first of which is to get this hose back down the plot, because I do leave it on the plot because um, it's just easier if you come in an evening very quickly after work, plug it in and water. Although, we do have a phantom hose cutter that sometimes turns up and just randomly cuts your hose, which is fun. So I'm going to untangle this, check it's all still working. hope so. I mean, it's spent most of the frosts in the shed, so it should be. And um, get watering because we actually haven't had anything other than a very slight occasional drizzle in April so everything is parched. I honestly think I swear at hoses more than any other piece of equipment. They're so capricious. See, the green one is a cheap hose, like 10 quid from Wilco, gets twisted. This is a hose lock hose, expensive, still gets twisted. Alright. See if we've got enough to reach the top. Yay! Okay, place your bets. How long until we get the first knot? I'm thinking a couple of meters. Right, let's see, let's get this on. First time this year. Ooh, there's gonna be knots. Oh, so twisty this pipe. I'll turn you around so you can have a look. Doesn't feel like there's anything flowing through it. Let's go up here and see, because we know there's a big knot up here. What it normally does is more like this. It twists and stops the water flow. Ah, oh, there we go, that was it. It was that one. And it'll fall back on itself in a minute because hoses are annoying. Come on, water pressure, water pressure, work with it. Finally, I can water the potatoes I've put in. I've really neglected these trees since I put them in, um, so I'm going to give it some water. Look, it has blossom. I can't remember which type this is. I think it's either a gala or a reenette. the other one. Please put no blossom in the yet. Now, if you're familiar with the layout of my plot, so if I let you get your bearings, you'll notice that something has disappeared from here. So this Dalek composter, literally we have spread the compost here. You can see still bits of compost in the bag. I mean, we took off the worst. I'm not panicked about those because they're not plastic. They are cornstarch, so they will rot down. Um, and that stuff has only been in that composter a year. And it actually makes me feel really compost. So I think I finished filling it just before lockdown on. Nothing in this bed yet. Um, probably the last one I take to it. As you can see, it's not ready yet. So I'll come back to that in a minute. Last potatoes I've actually have chitted. <laughs> I haven't chitted the rest of the bush yet. Just because of all time and laziness. Hose. Here we have, um, I don't know what I'm looking at, no, not King Edward. Kestrel, I think. 
think this is the Castro. King Edwards are all in buckets. And I've extended my experiments somewhat just purely due to lack of compost. So now I'll, I'll leave that as well. It's coming out really slowly. So I'll let it sit there a minute and I'll talk you through what I've done here. So all of these buckets, someone on Facebook said Oakland Gardens has got a really good deal. It's 10 buckets for £30, which was great. You can see how dry this is. This compost was black when I put it in on Tuesday night. Everything is so dry at the moment. I mean, whew, people are saying drought. It really is an April drought. So these four buckets here, because I was low on compost, I put, you can see at the bottom actually, a thin layer of wood chip at the bottom, then compost, and then that's just what I shook off to finish up. And then these four, which are also King Edwards, are just pure compost. And then of course we've got our potato experiment going on here. And I'm gonna water these for the first time. They haven't been watered. Oh, look, so far the winner is the U Garden Premium Compost. I can't see anything else growing in the others. So there we go, that's the one winning so far. So what I've done is I've brought down more compost. It's, it's got gravel in it. It's that stuff there. Which I got from um, local garden centre. Really nice garden centre. I just couldn't afford to get the pricey stuff. Yeah, lots of gravel in there. But always, Levington's always. But it's the cheap one. Um, yeah, so I'm going to top those up. Now, the last two years, you know I've grown potatoes. I've grown potatoes the last two years. And by the time it's time to lift the main crop, the rains have come and this clay is disgusting and it's really hard to get the potatoes out they're in a really mucky state when they come out so actually what I've been thinking is I'm not going to do main crops anymore unless I put them in buckets the obvious exception is I don't have enough buckets yet so the golden wonder which are a main crop are going to go in that lumpy bumpy bed um, because then I can just shake it out and put the compost across beds um, because I really don't want to be digging clay in September. Really don't, it's not pleasant and the potatoes don't look nice when they come out. Whereas in buckets from what I've seen from other YouTubers, they come out nice and clean. So that's the plan. So at the present I have 14 buckets. Yeah, 14 buckets. And I will be looking to expand that every year, just get a few more keep main crops in there. Don't mind putting the first ones in the soil if I have to, but do you know what? I think buckets are the way forward and I am quite a traditional grower. I mean, I don't like it when people cover their beds with weed membrane and then put soil on top, like in raised beds, because I'm like, what's the point of having this ground, you know? You know, the earth is there to be dug into. But there are a couple of advantages. One, no wet clay digging in September. Two, the compost can then be used as an autumn mulch. Three, what was three? There is a three. What was it? Yes, um, my potato jungle takes over. I get carried away with potatoes every year. I ordered 10 kilograms, 10 kilograms on this plot this year. And actually, by putting some in buckets, I'm freeing up the beds for other things. I don't have to crowd. You saw my tomatoes last year, they were far too crowded, which probably didn't help when the blight came. So I'm gonna spread things out a lot more consciously this year. Be a better gardener, I'm learning. Um, and just having some of the potatoes in buckets is really gonna help that. Right, I'm gonna go back and do some watering now. It's gonna be a long job, the water pressure is awful. And there's no one else here at the moment. I thought it was going to be really busy. I thought Sunday everyone will be up, but they'll be up probably in a couple of hours. So while they're not here and the water pressure will get even worse, I'm going to go and water. Hi and welcome back. And no, I haven't had a quick costume change. Um, last Sunday when I came up, it turned out I hadn't actually charged my phone overnight. So um, I couldn't finish what I was doing. So it's bank holiday. It is not eight o'clock in the morning yet. I just woke up early, so I thought, get up do some jobs um today i would really like i think do 
get my bean supports out work out where my tomatoes are going put some poles in just to start marking out the ground bit of weeding needed as well my three-year-old and I came and weeded on Saturday but because of the the rain sorry that's just one of the other plots um because of the rain they've um taken over somewhat sign of things to come so anyway have a look around get those bean supports up pull back some more membrane because half of it's planted up now but also I can show you what I did last Sunday that I didn't have time to video so let's start there so we'll just walk past the potato beds to the new fancy asparagus bed and they have survived the frost as well because there was a frost in the week so here we go I've got an asparagus bed and I was at Middleton House Gardens in Enfield yesterday and I was very closely examining their asparagus bed trying to look and they only had a few spears they were very thick and what I've noticed is since I've put them in here they do seem to be coming up thicker because they were in those small pots but there you go we have asparagus and that is variety Mary Washington, grown from seed last year. And finally in the ground. So in a couple of years time, I can have some asparagus. Um, right. Oh, if you remember this, this was the lumpy bumpy bed. So the golden wandering. So I hosed it down, I raked it. And then when the children came up, I got them to help plant the golden wonder potatoes. So that's all golden wonder really weedy there's a lot of bindweed trying to come up everywhere um this bit's particularly bad so what i want is when there's some wood chip i want to put some cardboard and wood chip on this area not do anything with it not plant anything because it's got the trees there here's the potato experiment you can see we have potatoes those were the first ones to come through oh finally i couldn't see that on saturday but there is one there that's in the homemade compost, which looks as ropey as the soil and the wood chip. So it's pretty even across them all at the moment. These are the King Edwards. They need more compost for these. So I'm out now. I have ordered some from you garden. And then I want to show you my pride and joy. My stumpery. These violets make me so happy. I don't even really like the colour purple, but I just love these. They're like velvet. And what I really, really, really would like is some bluebells, primroses, cowslips to make this a really lovely area. And um, at Middleton House Gardens yesterday, they had a wildlife area and they said on this sign, try and leave dead trees in place to rot away for nature or plant stumps upright so what I'm actually going to do here and probably all the way around here as well actually make this a whole wildlife area with wildflowers is to plant some stumps upright to mimic nature so yeah that's the Christmas tree really do need to saw it up a bit <laughs> but I haven't got a saw so that's a good start um, old potato jungle Hello Shadow. I really love these at the moment. I was saying to some friends the other day, it's the first time I actually follow planting instructions for distance, because I don't normally bother. I go rogue, which is now is really foolish. But I stuck to it. When I planted these, I stuck to the planting instructions. And now they're fully grown. I'm like, oh yeah, that, that's why they tell you to plant them at certain distance. Because look, I can walk through my rows. Look at all those flowers. That one looks a bit dead. Uh, they're doing really well, despite those enormous cracks in my clay soil. These are wizard beans from Real Seeds. And I ordered way too many, so I've got enough for next year as well. Or second sowing. The gladiolis. Can I even say that word? Gladioli. Gladiolus are starting to pop their heads up which is lovely so I've got those in that pot and the rest are actually around that wildlife area look at those pansies 
those violets are the same ones around the stumpery and those pansies their forebears were planted I'm sure it was two winters ago Uh, yeah, mixed pansy. Aren't they beautiful? Lots of other flowers coming up in this bed. Hopefully some calendula. Why has that rock moved? Yeah, all these stones are stones we've dug up. And I'm just, because I didn't dig a ditch here, I'm just trying to keep the grass away, basically. I think it looks kind of cool as well. Loads of raspberry flowers. But as you can see, the frost has got some of them so unfortunately those with the black dot of doom will not become strawberries but I think I'm going to be alright for strawberries this year even having lost those first flowers to the frost there's my grey burn finally got some blossom on I was a bit worried about it there we go there is blossom and it's becoming a really nicely shaped tree there. You can see, and that was you Garden, which is where I have said now I will buy my trees from because they're just really good. And I will never forget the Thompson Morgan stick that was the almond tree. So this is some of the stuff that's probably going to come back today. So this will probably be runner beans because tomatoes were here last year. Tomatoes are going to have to be here this year. I am a bit worried because obviously there were potatoes. And they are the same family but as you can see I don't have much choice and I am going to space them apart this year to keep the air flowing and try and avoid blight. So there we go it's not looking that bad really is it? This is the hair bed I did put some seeds in but as you can see because <laughs> this was like obviously a composter at some point other stuff fancies growing and because I put the seeds in I'm not entirely sure what I want and what I don't well I definitely don't want that bindweed over there and I pulled all that out on Saturday just two days ago so I'm going to be very cautious and uh, think before I pull I haven't seen any borage pop up yet maybe it's just been too cold at night everything else is looking really good there's my sweet cecily and my winter savory yeah winter savory that are new what is that i can't remember there'll be a sign there somewhere why can i not remember what you are this time what are you i can't even read the sign sorrel it's sorrel don't even know what you need sorrel for but it's always good to have herbs marjoram is looking beautiful curry plant just because i love the smell that fennel i'm so pleased to see that coming back because i thought that was dead some more sage some rosemary because the rosemary beetle seems to keep killing it and the seeds i put in at the back there coriander borage 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 Fever few, which is under that box. Summer savory under that one. Dill. What did I put in here? Black cumin. There we go. And that looks like that's coming up, so that's all good. My raspberries that are in pots. Oregano mint tarragon grass grass some daffodils which i have deadheaded yeah that's it so now i need to uh crack on with some jobs for today so what i'm trying to do here is put my ditch back in which has silted up over the winter rain certainly haven't had any in the spring then i'm going to rake this and if I have to, I'll dig the top bit, but I don't really want to, because I'll bring up weed seeds. And also, got to investigate all these bits, which I half suspect are potatoes I missed last year, so they'll have to come up as well.
basically finest bits washed off by the winter rains few more stones from my collection down the front what's down here. I'm gonna say potato. Let's find out. Potato. There we go. Sorry mate. No potatoes here this year. Baby potato, forgotten seed potatoes. I knew it was going to happen, and this is another good reason for putting them in pots. She can't miss any. Huge mare's tail as well, horse tail. three baby potatoes so far. There we go. I've actually, I was watching a lot of YouTubers and they seem to be talking about growing shop-bought potatoes, which I do try not to do, um, and parts of potatoes. So what I've actually done, we had some bambino potatoes, um, which were the ones we were growing as part of the school project. But um, unfortunately, when um, the people came to build the beds for the garden project, they didn't realise that our bags, there were six black bags with compost in, were potatoes, and so they seemed to have chucked them. So I bought some potatoes and they, I saw they were bambino, and one of them was green, so I thought, oh, I'll keep that for planting. And then I cut a little chit off another one. I thought, I wonder if that will grow. So they're chitting at home and because they're from the shop so i don't know if they're diseased or not i'm actually going to put them in a bucket more plastic and 
see what I can get out of. Ugh, skanky old potatoes rotting away. See what I can get out of. Oh, yuck. Um, one tiny potato and a part of a potato. So I think that'd be quite interesting. I'm just waiting for some compost to arrive. So I've tried to level the ground. I've got my bottles and my canes. And the idea now is to just mark out where my tomatoes are going. So when I can plant them out, I'm not gonna be in a rush and stupidly stick them close together again. Okay, as you can see, there's lots more space between them this year. So there's about a metre between rows, about 60 centimetres between each cane. And hopefully this will allow them plenty of space. So that's run for eight tomatoes. I've got a few more growing than eight, so I'm going to have to carry on and make some more space. But for now, if I turn you around, there we go. It's a start, isn't it? And now I'm thinking, it looks like I'm gonna have room to walk between them, but I bet I'm not. So I think, yeah, well, we'll see. Anyway, it's better than last year. Now what I'm gonna do is just um, put those poles down as far as I can go so they're really securely anchored in the ground because I've only just 
put them just very lightly in, so I'm just gonna see that one goes to there. Sink it down as far as I can go. I've just stopped for some water. Um, I've been digging out potatoes, grass, horsetail, bindweed. It's not too bad. I mean, nothing compared to when I first got the plot. But I'm just sitting here looking and it is so nice to see the plot taking shape. I mean, I do feel a bit like we're behind this year because it's been cold. I haven't sown like beans yet. Tomatoes are waiting for the warmer nights, which won't be for two weeks, I think. But it's so lovely to sit and see it taking shape. So I'll flip you around so you can see what I can see. I still feel I'm new at this, so I always feel like I'm going to be judged because I have cover down and, you know, other people don't cover or, you know, they've got stuff in their beds, you know, and you've got to cultivate as part of your tenancy. But now I can see it all, all taking shape. And I have to say, you've got to cover. If you are in a weedy um, site like I am I mean this is horrendously weedy with perennials and annuals it's a lifesaver it really is I mean you'll be able to see the difference in the patches that I've covered and the patches I haven't the ones I didn't cover are covered with grass and big clumps you know big clumps of grass whereas what I'm doing down there mainly the bits I'm having to dig apart from the potatoes is the trench where it's not been covered and obviously it's been wet and the seeds have rooted and I've got grass you can see down there by my fork you know there's a sudden patch of greenery there well listen to the birds it's so lovely it's not many people here today so it's really nice just to crack on extra bonus day I still kind of feel like I should be at work today it's a bit weird Anyway, I'm going to have a bit more water and then I'm going to get back to it and I'll probably wear that um, membrane that's blowing in the wind. That's probably where I'll stop today. I'll weight that down because there's that horse manure underneath and I'm not sure if it's safe to use yet. So I'll weight that down and I'll put some more poles in. That might be it. We'll see. There we go. 20 canes for 20 tomatoes. So now I'm going to go home and count my tomatoes and if I've got more than 20 I'm going to give them away. I'm not going to be really strict, I know it's difficult, I love tomatoes, but this is the space I have. I can't let them take over, um, so I'm going to be really choosy, choose the best 20, make sure I've got a variety and in a couple of weeks hopefully I'll be able to plant them out, that'd be nice. So this is where I want to put beans and peas literally when the tomatoes are finished i just left them you can see i've still got a label there there we go bits of tomato um, wow look that's how those don't biodegrade those pellets those were coconut core pellets i mean at least the roots have got through but it takes a while doesn't it so now i'm gonna have a look at all this rake it see what I can do with it don't know if I'll manage to get a um, bee frame up today but I would really like to get one up it'd be nice to get a pea thing up as well but we'll see there we go bean canes and from this one they don't look funky much they are look at that it does I'm not doing it again there we go so not bad we're getting ready windy now. I think the rain that was promised is moving in. So I'm just gonna, I've decided I am gonna weed the herb bed because if I don't get back for another week there will be monsters. So I'm just gonna weed the areas I know I haven't sown seed and then I'm gonna have a lovely gardening week. See you next time. <laughs>